So, hello everyone. Um, last year I presented our uh, binding generator for C++, uh, C++ code to, for, to ADA. Um, we, we promised you that it's going to be better than any existing solution, and we tried hard, but it isn't. <laughs> and I'm going to exp now I'm going to explain why. So what, we, what, uh, what did we say? We wanted to be better than existing solutions. Um, Um, we wanted to have to maintain the original C++ API layout. We wanted to have type safety. Um, we wanted to have template support because this, because this is what most of the existing solutions were lacking. Um, and for this, we also had to implement things like um, C++ uh, name mangling and so on. So how far did we get? Well, we got a working temp we got working template support to some extent. I showed a demo last year. Um, we were able to bind these simple things like uh, classes, namespaces, functions, pointers, function pointers, um, um, visibility like public, protected, and private. And also, we at some point we um, arrived at our own probably not complete uh, C++ um, name mangling implementation. So what? Did, what are the things we didn't achieve? Um, well, one great but also really complex feature of C++ are um, partial template specializations. So this is something that we didn't make, make to work. Also, there are many things that we could have uh, done with just more effort. Like uh, there are many um, Many edge cases like type devs on specific types, or the auto keyword operator overlays, function templates, and so on. Um, but there are also things um, we <coughs> didn't even try to do until uh, the point when we stopped, like destructors or multiple inheritance. So, why is it hard? In an overview, well, they're both quite complex languages, like ADA 2012 has 1,300 pages and C and C++ together have around 2,000 pages of, sta of, a, of standard. So you, to make a complete generator, you have to understand it all and map it all one on another. And at some points, they are also inherently different. So C++ templates can be used for meta programming. They are actually Turing complete. Um, Ada generics are not that, uh, not that versatile, which is, in my, in my mind, is a good thing. Um, also, arrays, for example, um, in ADA, they are a separate type. They have a specific um, index type. And in C++, the index is just, um, well, the array itself is, is just a built-in construct. And the index is just a constant expression that is casted to whatever type is needed on, uh, on compile time. So what doesn't work, or what is really hard to get right, um, templates in C++, they are static. So um, when you have a template, you instantiate with a type name, T, for example, and then you use this type. So this is like an ADA generic with a private type. And as it is static, it generates its own symbol. And this symbol is mangled to uh, prevent overlapping symbols. So we instantiate this template and we have with integer. So we have the name A, which maps to this name A in the symbol. And the integer match matches to this E in the symbol. The function name matches to this name in the symbol, and the other integer matches to this i in the symbol. The things between are um, start and end points for the names, and this set uh, underscore set is like just this is a C++ uh, mangled symbol. So um, we want to implement this as an ADA generic, and we want we don't want to make this statically. It's as a, well, not statically in the sense of compile time, but statically in the sense of binding but we want to generate our binding automatically. So what would we have to do? We have to generate the sim in the external name where we can import symbols in ADA. We would have to generate the symbol at compile time. Well, now we are running in a problem here. When we call this function, which generates um, this, the correct symbol part of our type, which x is of, so x is of type t, and we, we generate a string of, of x, which is type specific. <coughs> And the problem is, this isn't static. And in general, the ADA reference manual says in this, uh, no, well, not in, at this part, but in general, it says that this part, the template uh, 
the, the template um, argument is never static. So we will never be able to, um, ref to get the template argument be somewhere included in the symbol name. So this just doesn't work. The idea behind this function initially was um, we overload this function and for each type we return a specific uh, symbol. But the other problem is we can't uh, overload a function and then put a private type. Uh, if you go back, and we see that x is private and x is of a private type t, so we can't just overload m with integer and hope that the private type is integer and it will automatically resolve. This just doesn't work. So, um, yeah, you can't just generate a symbol from code in ADA. Um, the only solution would be a preprocessor. Um, we didn't want to have a preprocessor. The first uh, thing is ADA, um, the ADA doesn't have one in the first place. And the second thing is if we, want, we wanted to make the code as bar compatible as possible. And if we would make a preprocessor, it would be really hard to prove all the code because depending on the preprocessor options, you would only prove the part that the preprocessor includes. And then you, have, um, then you had to make, ha would have to make sure that all the preprocessor options are proved also. And this would require some meta prover that proves that all your code is proved. Um, yeah, so that's why we don't want to have a preprocessor, and this is an option for us. Um, the second is C, C++ supports pass by value for anything. So you can just take a class that is like a kilobyte large, and you can just pass it by value. Um, so how do we import a class in C++ and in, in ADA? First, the class itself is a record in ADA, and it has the convention C++, and it must be limited. So if you don't add the limited, you won't get the constructor, which is a function that returns A, but has a pragma C++ constructor. The important thing here is that this function behaves like a, uh, this construct behaves like a function so that it can initialize the limited object, but it actually is a, it is a procedure where A is the first argument as an out parameter. So um, yeah, this is kind of a kind of a special construct we need for C++ classes, so we can't omit this. Well, now we add a, fun a, a procedure print A. So as we can see here, um, this takes A without any pointer or reference addition, so it's just passed by value. And well, okay, we just imported it, and we say it's an in parameter, so it's potentially passed by value. Um, but the problem is, um, um, does anyone see the problem here? Exactly. Well, A is limited, and so A is always passed by reference. So what we do is we take the reference to A and pass it to print, and print thinks, oh, this is already my class. And for anything else, then this simple thing, it will just break, and you have a stack overflow, because print will just go deeper into the class, and yeah, this is your memory where the pointer is, but not your class. So, well, a considered solution would be that pr we can import print by the convention C pass by copy, which explicitly tells print, okay, whatever goes into there um, must be passed by copy. Problem is, um, this is only allowed for the as for the record type, and as as soon as we add, uh, make it limited and add pr a convention C plus plus to it, it is not longer a, re a record type but a C plus plus class type which can at no point ever be passed by, uh, by value. So we can just define an identical record and convert between both. So yeah, this is going to be on, on one point really, really ugly because you always have to convert between usually identical things. And the other thing is you would have to make an unchecked conversion between a limited and a non-limited type and this is some kind of, you, you, may, you take an address and convert it to something that is not an address, so this doesn't sound really safe. Um, yeah, things that are just not working, uh, automatically called destructors. So um, I think we even wrote a ticket to ADA core, and they just told us this won't work. Um, an option for this could be control types, but um, to use a control type, you, you have to inherit from it. So um, you're, you alre already have the controlled uh, type in your class. But then it's not any more identical to the C++ class you actually want to use. So you probably have to 
embed the C++ class somehow into the control type, but if you have a point to the C++ class, it doesn't point anymore to the control type. So, yeah, you see this isn't going anywhere. Um, yeah, we could call the destructor manually, but then we had to implement um, a solution in our binding generator that checks act the scope of and of uh, the scope of any object we ever see in C++ and checks it if it goes out of scope and automatically calls then the generator, uh, the destructor. This isn't really a feasible solution. So what have we learned? Well, even if anything would work, we would still have to implement 2,000 pages of standard. Um, and yeah, there are things that might work with really high effort with a preprocessor, but there are also things that just never will work really good. Um, or at the high cost of a bad usability or really, really bad safety. And since we are going to target Spark as, as our language, we are not going to make any compromises in safety. Last year, someone asked this question. Um, do you fear that you import the weirdness of C++ into Ada? And, well, now we have our answer. It is yes. Um, yes. Um, well, we didn't make the binding generator for no purpose, but the purpose was to, was to build um, safe components for component-based systems. So since we don't have a binding generator, we had to write our bindings ourselves. And I will talk about those bindings and the, the solutions in, our, our, in my nice, a nice component framework in Spark talk tomorrow in the uh, microkernel left room. So you're all welcome to go there. Thank you. Are there any questions? Fabio? Yeah, are there things in the language, uh, the Ada language, that you would like to change? Sorry, it was just. Are there things in the, in the Ada language that you think uh, could be changed? <coughs> Um, okay. The yeah, the question was if we can cha uh, change things in the Ada language to overcome some of those limitations. Well, what at some point what we really thought would be useful would be um, a static, the the op the option to make uh, generics completely static. So the problem is that uh, co generics are never considered static, even if all inputs are actually static because you just write them into the code. So this would be a, a great option for those things. Another one would. I don't know if it's um, if it's something you want to have in the language, but maybe some kind of const expression. So like like an expression function, but you say it's ever sta is, uh, is always static, and you can evaluate it at compile time. This would probably make templates and generics work. Um, about the pass by value thing, I'm not sure if this is going is, if this is ever going to work. So about the, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I try to remember you. Yeah, I try to repeat it. Well, um, the question was, <laughs> if we if we can um, embed the the C plus plus types as pointers in our, into our Ada types, and then that we can forward uh, the destructor and construct and copy constructor calls to C plus plus again. Um, our initial goal was also for those component based systems, and we don't have dynamic memory there, and. Our memory management solution for these systems is that all the memory resides in the BSS in our package. So we have, we have to um, 
to know all ex exact um, C++ type layouts to map them correctly to Ada. Yes. Yes, exactly. So we have a quite limited, um, uh, quite a, li uh, a limited environment. So with a limited runtime, so we really have to make our man memory management ourselves, and then we have to know the exact type layout for any C++ type we want to use. Uh, you. Um, I think this was slide three or so. <coughs> so the overloading, th so the question was somewhere on my slides was overloading doesn't work with private types. And what do you mean by what? Um, ah, no, I know, I know what you mean. So um, you see here that uh, T is a private type. So, and the idea was that m is a function we implemented somewhere else for any pos possible type ah, and that already. whatever you put in t is automatically overloaded in m but if you do a construct like this the compiler just tells you okay well m does not accept t but m wants integer or whatever so you have to implement an m that accepts exactly t and then you again you don't know what t is but you want at this point you want to know what t is Yes? Considering that nothing is limited in C++, <laughs> how are you uh, mapping C++ classes to limited records? Um, this is actually um, a, a restriction set by the, by the CNUT. Um, uh, sorry, yeah. Um, why are we, are we using limited <coughs> types for C++ classes uh, and while nothing is limited in C++? Well, one thing is we are not in C++, and when you copy some things in C++, or um, there might be a copy constructor called, but if you copy something in Ada, the copy constructor isn't called, so you're actually not allowed to copy it because it doesn't have the same behavior. So we, you don't want to copy it in Ada. And the other limitation is Knut just says if you use this pragma, the type must be limited point, so it just doesn't compile. <laughs> Any further questions? Well then, thank you. Thank you.